Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. Again, my name is Anna Celine and right now we are going to talk about a very interesting um, topic because it's all about how to prepare for your research colloquium, the presentation. So if you want to know more, just keep on watching. Hi guys! Again, so... Uh, now, we are going to talk about the research colloquium. So this one is actually very important and it's especially if you're in graduate school. So research colloquium is kailangan siya pagdaanan before going to defense. So specifically if you're in uh, MA in um, uh, USD. So in USD, um, isa to sa pinaka kinakatakutan, the research colloquium. So what is the research colloquium nga pala muna? Before we go on the talking about the format and all. So research colloquium is actually a presentation of your research um, that is uh, that is done before your thesis defense. Okay, so in here you're going to present your uh, your research. Um, yung iba kasi they still don't have the results. Yung iba naman meron ng results. Pero um, to be safe, uh, gawin mo gawin mo na yung results. I mean, do the statistics na of your research and then. Uh, uh, and then prepare the research colloquium. Okay, so um, actually there's a lot of things to talk about research, but for now, re since research colloquium is topic, natin, let's focus on that. What is talked about in research colloquium? So the, uh, the things that are being talked about or being presented in research colloquium is of course your research, where in front of the student body of USD and in front of the professors of different departments. So that's why this is very important and kinakatakutan talaga. And don't worry because I'm here and I'm going to tell you more about research colloquium and how to survive it. Wow. <laughs> okay. So I have here my iPad right now. So I have here the research colloquium. So this is not the format disclaimer lang. This is not the the, the research colloquium that I've presented in my research when I was in graduate studies, but this is just the format and it contains all the tips that I have. Okay. So uh, so this is the research colloquium. So let's get started. So what are the things that are included in the research colloquium? So in here, of course, you should have the title in here. Dito yung title, and then here is my name, and then also na dito din advisor. Pero hindi ko na nilagay advisor. But in here, ayan yung title. Dito yung um yung name mo. And then sometimes there is a logo in here, two logos in here. The logo of the school and the logo of the graduate studies or minsan baliktad or minsan nandito pa kayo iba isa so that's how it looks like so that would be your front slide okay so please take note since you will be presenting make sure that your slide is according to the format of the school and also you have a coordination with the ones going to present your powerpoint presentation so that is for the research colloquium so i mean the the front page okay so please take note na dapat simula pa lang maganda na and presentable na yung uh, PowerPoint. Next one, the next page would be containing the background of your study. So what is the background of your study? So if you've already done your research one, two, uh, chapters one, two, and three, you should already have a good hardcore background of the study, which contains your rationale, the problem of, of your study, the the problem, the key problem of your study, and then the brief overview of the research questions that you have. So in here actually sa research colloquium, yun lang din tatlong yun ang pinakamahalaga na may present mo sa background of the study. You can actually include there are some of the RRLs, but please make it shorter and limited. Actually, in every slide nga dapat limited eh. So in others, uh, five to six points or bullet points would do. Um, yung iba naman umaabit ng seven. But I don't um, I don't uh, suggest that. I do suggest na just limit your slides. Just limit the bullet points on your slides. And also, if you have to use phrases just to get to the point where you're getting at, please do so. Okay? Siyempre, napapasok pa rin yung grammatical errors. But, of course, you have to make sure that you're actually putting on the phrases in the sentences. So, that's for the background of the study. 
The next one is the theoretical framework. Theoretical framework. So in my case, in my research, I've only used two to three theories. But for others, yung mga talagang sobrang bonggang-bong na talaga, gumagamit sila ng five to seven. So I know, it's hilarious. And mas mahirap i-defend pag ganun. So uh, what I did was I only focused the two to three theories and then I backed it up with hardcore literature. So sobrang ihalaga nito. So what I, do, what I did in this part is that I just put on the uh, two, uh, two to three theories in here and then sobrang uh, konti lang explanation. Okay, konti explanation lang. And then, that's for the, this part. So, theoretical framework was the next part. And then, the next slide and the next part would be the research paradigm. So, for those of you who, does, who doesn't know research paradigm, in other schools kasi, they don't have research paradigm. But basically, the research paradigm is actually, how are you going to conduct your research? Well, in my case, I've used the mediating. So, what my paradigm looks like is like this. There's a square, a big square, rectangle, I don't know. And then, here's our, uh, there's uh, three uh, tri uh, squares as well, which is mediation kasi. Eh. So, this would be my verse variable, variable 1, variable 2, and then variable 3. And then, it has arrows like this, just to show its relationship with it, uh, which other, with each other. And then, after that, once I've established the relationship for each other, um, I've put an, another arrow in here. Uh, what will I do after that? So, I, since I'm in industrial psychology, I put on implement it. So, I've put here a program to implement it. Uh, how to implement what I've researched. So, that's how my research paradigm looks like. So, yun lang. One page. That's it. Just a picture. That's uh, just a figure. And then, the rest, is sabihin mo na lang. Explain mo na lang. Okay? So, you can uh, actually use notes naman to explain your your uh, not notes ah, not written notes but actually read it okay you can actually discuss by reading your notes of course later on i'll be uh, telling you on how to be to to actually discuss it without looking awkward <laughs> and then the next one is the research methods so in here um just focus on what research method you are and then how are you going to do it so for others they put it like this so they have the mixed method and then sa mixed method, inuna muna nila si Quanti, followed by Quali, and then followed by Synthesis. Yun lang. So, explain mo lang yan. That's the research method. Yun lang naman gusto makita nila eh. Wala na pa bulak-bulak-bulak-bulak-lakang salita. <laughs> okay. The next one is the research instrument. So, what are the research instruments? So, in here, I just uh, focus on the three research instruments that I've used. So, I've put out one, two, three research instruments, including their validity, reliability, and norming. Yan. So, yun lang. So, yun lang na nakasulit. Bale yung title, the ti title, and then VRN. Yun lang. Yan to, tatlo lang. So, tatlo lang din. So, uh, syempre, mas maikli. Dahil yun lang lang eh. Must make lead that. So that's the research instruments. So the next one would be the data gathering procedure and data analysis. Here's the tip. <coughs> Excuse me. The tip in here is that you have to tell it in a storytelling format. Just tell it in a storytelling format. So just say um, the researcher in this study again. I use always use the third pe person. The researcher in this study gather the data using blah 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 and then analyze it using the statistics blah 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 yun lang and then use it in a storytelling format when you present it para ka nagkakwento lang kung paano ka kinundak ikokondak yung gathering mo of data the next one is the results and discussions so for others yung iba wala pang results yung iba naman pwede depende kasi yan kung nasa kang stage ng ng um ng research mo or ng uh, ng year mo sa sa graduate studies mo but in my case naglagay na ako ng results and discussion well my other classmates and others do not have yet their results and discussions but for your results and discussions focus on your research questions again research questions focus on that research questions the result of that research question and the discussion okay so for the discussion in here, you don't have to put everything naman sa slide mo. You just have to 
put some keywords or keynotes rather na lagay mo lang naman na naka bullet point siya. The rest, where? Put it in your notes. What kind of notes? Pwedeng written, pwedeng handheld. So, let's say example ito. <laughs> handheld notes, ako kasi makaluma ako ba before. So, I use the handheld notes and then I just read it. The discussion part. Siyempre, iklian mo lang. Ayaw naman natin i-bore ang ating audience. And then also, <coughs> excuse me, my classmates back then, they've used the notes in the PowerPoint presentation. So, pwede din yun. Para mukha namang, ano, kabisado. Diba? Para mukhang kabisado. But basically, that's what the results and discussion looks like. Okay. And then, um, I think that's it. So, of course, you have to end your slide with thank you for listening. But the research colloquium doesn't end there, ha? Huh? So, you can say na thank you all for listening uh, for my presentation. The, the floor is now open for your questions. You can say that. Okay? Because after that, there will be a few minutes for your question and answers. But in here, just a few reminders. You have to limit your slides. Kasi meron din limit yan. Bawal kong dumagdag or bawal kong lumagpas ng 10 to 15 or 10 to 20 slides. You have to limit it. So in my case, nilimit ko siya ng 10 slides lang. Containing na lahat ng lahat ng um, special por portions of my research. Okay. So here are other reminders as well. So please use the 10-20 rule. 10-20-30 rule. So what is the 10-20-30 rule? The 10-20-30 rule is the 10, not more than 10 slides, which is I did then. And the 20, not more than 20 minutes presentation, which is in our case, in our school, in USD, that's only 10 to 15 minutes. And 30 is the font size that you're going to use. So what is the font size? How do you know? So that is the 30. So this is the font size. I'm sorry. <coughs> okay, so this is the 30 font size in here. I don't know, 30 is the font size. Ito. Yeah. So that is the 10, 20, 30 rule. And then the next one, and the the final one, and the most important is that, of course, you have to prepare not just only your presentation, but also yourself. So in here, I have written some few. So like next is the the first one would be make eye contact. So if you're in front of the crowd, of course, it's gonna be hard to make eye contact. Shabran daming mata. <laughs> Kidding aside. So if you're going to make eye contact, ang, ang sense lang nun is if, for example, you have your notes. Actually, lahat ata naman, nagdo notes doon. And it's sobrang kabisado na lang slides nila. So if you have your notes, like for example, back then when I presented my research colloqu colloquium, I have notes. So I've just read my notes. It, the, the notes are here. And then the audience are in front of me. So ganito lang binabasa ko. Instead of reading like this, according to Angolwan 2013, there's a big impact of the economy on the economy of the Yingyan. So as you can see, they are just reading straight in here. So you can actually make eye contact by doing this. According to 2013, uh, uh, sorry, according to Angolwan in 2013, there's a big impact of in the economy. So as you can see there, I'm also making an eye contact to you guys. So I'm I have I have my notes in here and also doing eye contact. So I'm not plainly like doing like this. Like, according to 2013, Angolwan I'm not doing that. And also you have to make your words bigger and uh, emotion there. Because we don't want to sound blunt, diba. So you have to uh, sound like uh, we have to sound like the words that we are actually expressing. So that there, that the first one is make eye contact. The next one, take down notes. Why and when are you going to take down notes? Like what I've mentioned you a while ago, that during the research colloquium, after your presentation, there would be a question and answers. The question and answers would be coming from the students or from the professors of from different departments who are also good at research. So in here, I do suggest to bring your own notebook and then take down notes. Or if you can, you can record yourself. Use your phone, record yourself. And then record everything that you can hear there. And then check on how other people or other students, because other students can answer, can, ano, ganyan, how they answer and approach the question. So you. The next one, and also kung maswerte ka nga, at naan din yung panel mo, baka matanong na ng panel mo yung tanong mo, tanong sa defense. So please do record yourself, or record and take down notes if necessary. The third one with us, which which is practice. So it typically in research colloquium, in, in any other research presentations, there will always be limits. So in our school, 10 to 15 minutes is only the, the limit that will be given to you on the 
the research or your presentation. So practice in front of the mirror. Practice 10 to 15 minutes strictly. Dapat ma present mo lahat without any rush on your voice and any tense and everything. Yo, practice and also practice your posture. Paano ka tatayo? Ano ka kilos mo? And etc. And then the last least, be confident. So the research, I, I mean, um, the professors, the audience know when you are uh, scared, anxious, and many more. So please be confident uh, all the time. So how are you going to be confident? So two things. First, practice. Second, learn, uh, study. Study your material. If you study your material, if you know your material, you doesn't have any loopholes, you're good to go. So yun lang. So that's actually how you do it. And then after the research presentation, after your part of the colloquium, as an end, you can say that. Thank you all for listening. And uh, ayun, thank you all for listening. Have a great day. Baba, gracefully. And then you can do it. <laughs> and then you're next to the, the, to the defense now. So uh, that's it. Actually, that's all everything about the research colloquium. I, I hope that you've learned something about my research colloquium presentation and tips. So thank you very much all for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know at the comment section below. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. See you on my next video. Bye for now.